In the next 16 minutes, we're going to learn if air conditioners like the Lennox SL25 and the Lennox SL28 are worth six to $8,000 more than some of their competitors like the Bosch IDS or the Grief Flex. Lennox Variable Speed Air Conditioners can cost over $20,000 here in the Phoenix market. And there are a few competitors of theirs that offer the same technology, the same inverters, the same features, same 10 year warranties for six to $8,000 less than the Lennox. Stick around because I will name names on those brands. I've given you some clues already. I do have two of these Lennox systems in my own home. So we're talking about 12 to $16,000 more than something like previously named. And I'll tell you if I think it's really worth it. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly after six years of living with two Lennox XC25s, the equivalent of today's Lennox SL25 and SL28. I have reviewed a lot of air conditioners on this channel over the years. Usually I review the latest products, but as a homeowner and a 35-year HVAC technician, I think a real-world use case is just as important, maybe more important. So. I'm gonna give you an honest look at what these units do well, where they fall short, and whether paying Lennox's premium is worth it compared to brands like Goodman, Gree, Bosch, etc. As well as, again, my own experience as a homeowner. Not much has changed between the Lennox XC25s that we're gonna look at and the newer SL25s and the SL28. This is not a hit piece on Lennox. It's also not a promotion for Lennox. We sell Lennox, but we sell a slew of other brands. So what I'm sharing is unbiased. It's straight from someone who not only installs them and services them, but it's from somebody that has been living with these for a number of years now. And I'm gonna tell you about what I've experienced with them. I'm Rich Morgan with Magic Touch Mechanical in Mesa, Arizona. Let's jump into it. Let's start by doing a walk around and taking a look at these Lennox XC25s, how they're built. I'll talk about some of the things that I like about them and then we'll get into some of the issues we've had and what I don't like about them. First off, you can see it's a very tall unit. They sit slightly above the window. The reason they're so large is when these were built, they were the most efficient system that you could buy from any brand. Not just Lennox's highest efficiency, but everybody's highest efficiency. And they still hold that claim to fame with the SL25 and the SL28. Now these are XC25s versus XP25s, which means I have them paired with a gas furnace inside. Had I'd be changing them today. I might have done something a little different, so we'll talk about that. But let's talk about the good. So first off, as you can see, the cabinets are in very good shape. The tops are in good shape. It's got this resin plastic tops. They are in tip-top shape. So the cabinet looks very good. They hold up well. This is on the west side of my home, Phoenix, Arizona. They take a beating in the sun. They've held up extremely well. Painters got a little bit of paint over there, but other than that, they are very well-built cabinets. It'd be nice if they were a little smaller, but the reason they're so large is because of that efficiency. More coil area equals higher efficiency, so that's why we see air conditioners getting taller and taller. Next, these are very quiet. They're both running right now. I have a four ton over here and a five ton, so I have nine tons of cooling going right now. I'm standing about two and a half feet away from this guy here and I'm talking at regular volume here. When these were manufactured, they were the quietest units on the market. That guy just kicked off right now. And I can hear that one is now going into a lower speed. You can actually hear the volume going down. So overall, build quality, sound quality, I would give them both an A plus without a doubt. Let's talk about some of the features. First things first, we just had a dust storm. We're gonna see we got some tree debris and stuff in the cabinet here. Nothing major, but you can see the dust that just rolled through here. One of the things that makes this really quiet is this swept wing fan blade. 
this is running over here. It is very quiet. We're gonna open it up and take a look inside here. Before we open these up, let's have a quick safety moment. If you're ever cleaning your air conditioner, you wanna wash your coils, you wanna look for this box. This is the electrical disconnect box. And inside we're gonna have a fuse block and you're gonna grab these and pull this out. What that's gonna do is kill power to this unit. I also wanna point out, since we just had to work on these units, I took the time to do a little maintenance. This is insulation on the suction line of our line set. As you can see, it's all brand new with new zip ties. I redid both of them. After six years of sitting in the western facing sun, this stuff starts to deteriorate, crumble kind of like a pool noodle. You want to keep those well insulated. That's going to help with your efficiency and help the machine work better. So little maintenance moment, little safety moment. Let's get to it. First off, one of the things that we're going to see that we don't see on anything but a variable speed inverter compressor is this board here on the right. That is our inverter control board. What that's doing is telling that compressor what speed to be running in. And in any air conditioning system, we're gonna see a regular control board like this. You can see that's got a blinking light there. And that will show any error codes or anything that's going on. We got a compressor there. That is a compressor blanket. That's helping absorb the sound and keep the sound level down. I told you that there was some problems that we've had with these units and let's start with this right here that is called a dryer it's brand new because we had to open up the refrigerant circuit there is a component known as the expansion valve that went bad we had to open the refrigerant circuit up and anytime you open up a refrigerant circuit you have to put in a new dryer vacuum it back down purge the system with nitrogen we recharged it all with virgin refrigerant we'll talk a bit more about that but this is what the inside of this looks like and i mentioned those codes this unit has onboard diagnostics in it this is the back side of the panel that i just took off and we can see the whole list of codes so our technician can see what's going on when we have trouble with your air conditioner. Let's go inside. We'll take a look at the iComfort S30 thermostat and talk about that. All right, we're looking at one of the thermostats. It's a good looking thermostat. It reminds me of a mini iPad. It's thin, very sleek, cool glass. You get a lot of information on it. So we have what's known as the Lenox Pure Air both air filtration and air purification, the best on the market. We just replaced both the filter and the UV bulb for the purifier, so it's showing 100% on both. Things that I do like about this thermostat, one, easy operation. If I wanna change my temperature, drop it down, it's real easy to do. We have our time here, what our outdoor temperature is from our outdoor sensor. You can see what our humidity is here. And you can see what you're cooling to, what it is inside. We just dropped it down to 72. The other thing that I like about this is since I have two of them, I can control both thermostats. You can see this one's labeled back hall. This one's labeled front hall east. So I can get in here and I can control both. But I want to point out one problem right off the bat, and that is that purifier error. Now you saw in this first one, we have 100%, 100%, and on the back hall, we have 100% on the filter, but that error is a known issue that there is no resolution for. All right, so I'm standing at the back hall thermostat. This is the one that's got that error issue. It does have a Wi-Fi app as well, but you can see we can go in here, we can set it to cool only, heat only, we can set it to auto change over, and you could program schedules into it. I pretty much just set this to my desired temperature. And one thing I really do love about the Lennox inverter system is that it truly does maintain perfect comfort. 
Lennox says they'll maintain the temperature to within a half a degree of your setting. And I will say over the course of six years, that is very much true. Both sides feel perfect all the time. Okay, at the beginning of the video, I promised that I was going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We talked about some of the good, a little bit of the bad, but we haven't talked about the ugly yet. So let's recap. First, the good. This thing delivers precise comfort. It is without a doubt the most comfortable air conditioner I've ever had in my home. And I will say that in the hundreds of them that we've installed around Phoenix, I've never heard anything different from one of our clients. They absolutely love how well it cools their home. I've had it set to 68 degrees meat locker cold on a 115 degree day and it will achieve it, it will maintain it. It is an impressive machine. Number two, it is whisper quiet. Those two condensers that you saw, a five ton and a four ton, are sitting right outside my bedroom window. I don't hear them at all. You heard me talking there at normal volume with them both running. They are very quiet. Number three, build quality is outstanding. They still look great. The cabinets don't rattle. They're easy to service, they're easy to clean. It's a well-designed cabinet. Number four, I'm gonna give it to Lennox on support and parts availability. They've always been on point. I've been doing business with them for over 20 years. So I'm gonna give it to Lennox for that. So the bad, we talked about the Phantom Purifier error. It's not a big deal for me, but this unit today sells for over $20,000 and there are rivals or competitors of it that sell for thousands and thousands of dollars less than that. With regards to the breakdown of the expansion valve, this is not an uncommon repair. I'm a realist, I'm an HVAC contractor. Shit happens. It's electromechanical technology working in one of the toughest environments on earth. So I'm not going to really hold that against Lennox. They didn't manufacture that expansion valve. They installed it in their machine. One thing that I will hold Lennox accountable for is there is a component called a smart hub. And it's required because in order to use the Lennox S. 30 thermostats, which are a proprietary thermostat. You can't hook up another thermostat to operate this machine. You have to have smart hubs. And I have replaced three smart hubs on two machines in six years. But it gets worse. Let's talk about the ugly. The Lennox S30 thermostat. I used to speak so highly of it. When it first came out, I was like, wow, this thing is sexy. It looks like a mini iPad. The contractor controls and just its ability was great, but I no longer feel that way about the Lennox S30 iComfort thermostat. And the reason why is because I have replaced four of them in six years. So when you've replaced four S30 thermostats and three smart hubs and we count in the TXV failure. I have had eight failures in six years on two systems. Now again, I am a contractor, I see it. I've seen new systems break down two, three times a year. Sometimes it's the luck of the drawer. It was built on a Friday and they were running out the door at the manufacturing plant. That's one thing when you pay $5,000 for a complete system, but we're talking about $20,000 plus systems. If I had to do it all over again, I would buy another variable speed air conditioner, but I would more than likely go with something like the Bosch IDS. And the reason I say that is you get 95% of the efficiency you get better sound ratings in some tonnages. You get basically all those things without a proprietary thermostat. So you can go with an Ecobee thermostat, a Honeywell thermostat. You get the same warranty for thousands of dollars less. Now, Bosch is only available in a heat pump. <clears throat> they do have 90% furnaces, but we're in Phoenix. It would be a waste of money here. So I wanted to go with gas. My last home was heat pumps. 
there was gas available here. So I was like, hey, I'm a New Yorker. Let's get some gas furnaces in here. But if I were to do it again, I don't really need gas furnaces in Phoenix. Heat pumps do their job great here in Phoenix. And so I would just stick with the bang for the buck and I would go with the Bosch IDS. So I hope this review helps somebody who's out there looking for a new air conditioner. I do lots more reviews on this site, so subscribe, check out our other reviews, or check out our blog. It's at fireandairaz.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys.